Hello everyone, my name is Anthony and in today's video I want to show you how to create your own drone. And when I say how to create your own drone, yes, you can take and buy some components from online and you can also, you know, design your own stack up. And yeah, we also have a guest who's interested in this tutorial. When I say a stack up, you could have, you could buy your own, say, electronic speed controller. In this particular case, we are using the off the shelf product, but But in the future videos, I'll show you how you can design your own electronic speed controller. This is using the LPC1769 breakout board. So this is the microcontroller that is able to get all the signals from the IMU, which is in the stack below. And it's also able to control the motors. It's got its own radio module on the side over here. And the radio module is able to uh, communicate with the base station. In this particular case, this is the Arudvino and the NRF24 L01 Plus. All right. So, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you how this works. Uh, I'm not added the propellers because I don't want to make this big machine fly in my home. Uh, but at the same time, I want to show you how you can design your own protocol stack, how you can uh, design your own um, embedded stack, write your own code, how you can read data from the IMU so that you can make sense out of it and then write your own control algorithm so that you can do some basic flight dynamics and flight control. Uh, what goes into communicating with the radio, what the protocol is in the sense, you know, um, when when you send a signal, uh, how do you know whether you want it to move forward, move back, move left, move right? How you can control each individual motor in this particular case, and I'll also show you uh, uh, methods of uh, you know applying when you get the data from the IMU, which is the inertial measurement unit, which is the gyroscope and the accelerometer. How do you apply basic filtering? You can apply Kalman filtering or complementary filtering and uh, you know clean up all the data so that it's giving you the orientation of the quadcopter when it is uh, when it is flying also what you can learn is uh, in terms of the battery management how the power is uh, feeding into the whole system and how you can trigger pulse width modulation signals to this ESC so generally speaking when you have and buy an ESC uh, which is an electronic speed controller you also get a controller with it which uh, sends uh, their own signal to uh, communicate with the ESC and spin the motors but in this case we're not using off-the-shelf controller we are programming our own controller our own microcontroller to control this ESC so what will the pulse with modulation look like what is the pulse really like and um, because we're trying to kind of hack into the system and create the signals that will communicate with these motors. So we're going to show you how to do that as well and how um, you can start to, you know, buy off the shelf ESC products and you can use your own controller to control them. So what we have underneath the hood over here, just to give you a basic idea of the, um, of the hardware and embedded stack, uh, we have the flight controller right on top. Now this is, I've just sandwiched everything together. Uh, just so that I could prototype a quadcopter very quickly. In the middle, we have the power delivery system, which is basically powering the battery power all the way to the motors. We have the IMU, which I put in a small little breadboard over here, sandwiched it. Um, we have the accelerometer, we have a gyroscope, and we have a radio module. The accelerometer also comes with the magnet, which also has the ability to sense mag the magnetic effects, in a sense, the heading angle which is the North Pole, the South Pole. Now, these are old IMU units, so there's a lot of drift in the reading, which is not particularly accurate. Uh, I believe if I would, and when I say old, I mean this is like at least 10 years old, these are IMU sensors. The modern IMU sensors will at least not have that much of uh, error in the reading. Now, I can compensate for the error using software algorithms, as I mentioned, like Kalman filter or complementary filter, but you're better off getting a sensor that at least does not have uh, obvious errors in the reading where in terms of drift or in terms of offsets where you could you would rather control it at the hardware level than at the software level 
because in the software level you really want to spend you want to spend most of the computation doing the sense of fusion algorithm rather than uh, you know just cleaning up all the data and it's um, you know a, even a cheap sensor today would would give you a much better uh, reading and would be less sensitive to noise all right so this is how what we're going to do we're going to show you how to get started so um, what I'm going to do right now is I am going to connect this particular Arduino, which is the radio module over here. I am going to connect it onto my screen over here. So let's connect this. This is going to be port, um, port seven. And as soon as you we uh, open our IMU sensor, no, sorry, the uh, Arduino board, we now see this is a particular code that I've written, which basically says you can uh, you can stop the motors you can fetch all the readings you can you know trigger each motor you can fly front move back move left move right and then you can also control the duty cycle of the motor now the difference between this test motor one and, and the motor one over here is that you're generally speaking you you have to uh, the 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 actual ESC does not really give does not you don't program the ESC or send signals to the ESC with the pulse width modulator you basically have to send in the signal in terms of less than two milliseconds and so one millisecond between one millisecond and two millisecond is your is your um, is your duty cycle so one millisecond is zero duty zero percent and two milliseconds is a uh, hundred percent of your duty cycle so you, so that's what this reading over here is it's basically saying you want to provide the information in milliseconds and this reading over here does the conversion for you and says might as well why don't you send this in uh, percentage and then we'll convert it into milliseconds and then send the signal so that's really what we're doing over here and as a human it's much easier to say 20% duty cycle 50% duty cycle in this in, and it's very similar to say basically saying 20% the speed of rotation uh, or 50% the full the full uh, capable speed and that's what this particular um, signals that we can send so I'll sh I will share this code of how you can write your own uh, uh, radio interface so what we'll do is we'll get started. So um, I am going to plug this into this. All right. And to show you how this works right now. So that's the B basically saying everything is fine. And let's basically send one signal over here. So what I have over here is um, you can go to send. And in this particular case, let's go and send, uh, let's trigger motor. So 013 is the um, motor four and we want it to go for 20% duty cycle. Now, when you buy an off-the-shelf ESC, believe me, you don't have continuous um, ability to change the speed of the motor. It's very discrete in the sense you can send it at, you know, like one millisecond, 1.2, 1.5, 1.7, and, and two milliseconds. You cannot send a 1.15 millisecond. It'll be the same speed as zero. Or it'll be, it won't rotate basically. So it's very discrete. I think you have only five to seven range speed ranges in, in this particular control. And that's the reason why if you can create your own ESC, you'll have a much more smoother way of controlling uh, these ESC. So that's the reason why one of them, I will talk about how you can create your own electronic speed controller because off the shelf products, yes, it can help you get started very quickly, but there's a lot of drawbacks to it. Not to mention that you really can't even sense, you know, current and voltage and get some feedback out of it so that you know uh, what the speed of the motor is. Uh, when I say what the speed of the motor is, that every motor, there's an electrical side, there is an electrical side to it, and then there's a mechanical side to it. And as far as the law of conservation of energy is that if you can measure the power input, you most likely can estimate the power output. Say there is, you know, some form of energy conversion losses. So if I can measure the voltage and current and multiply both of mul multiply voltage into current, you'll get the power input in the, from the electrical side. I can almost guesstimate the, um, when I say guesstimate, I mean a guess, kind of guess, but with certain level of accuracy and predictability, what the mechanical output is. But in this particular ESC, I don't really have a nice way of, you know, getting the voltage and current for all those motors. Unless I put a, you know, voltage sensor in one, voltage sensor in two, voltage sensor in three, voltage sensor four, which you could do, but you rather have the ESC do it on, in, you know, in the process of while it's spinning the motor to get that feedback. So that's when you create your own ESC, you'll have the ability to not only, you can have the ability to sense the voltage and current, you'll also have the ability to control the motor in a much more discrete value, in a much more continuous value. 
All right, so let's get started. So what we'll do is we'll send a signal of 0 0.113 just to show you that 0 0.13 is the code that I want to send, which is basically to rotate motor four. And the next number over here, which says 20, which let's rotate it at 20% duty cycle. So when I send the number, you can see that um, one of the motors is running. Now it's clearly off screen. So what I'll do is I'll stop the motor. All right, so what we'll do over here right now is I will basically try to send a 0 0.012 and 0 0.12, 0. so yeah. So let's try to rotate one of these motors. So this might be a 0 0.11 maybe, 0 0.11.20. The goal over here is to just show you how you can control the whole every individual aspect of the quadcopter and then eventually from there you can you know make it hover just make all the four motors rotate at the same time now if i just add propellers this won't particularly fly at this particular speed even if all four were running but it would be i mean it will still create a lot of uh, wind and and then and it and then forces out there and if i just increase it by another 10 percent or 20 percent degree cycle it will it will start to fly uh, so and can get dangerous, especially in a house. And this is a big quadcopter. It's, it looks it looks small, but it's pretty big. All right. So what signal did I send? Zero eleven. So I'm just going to go to zero eleven zero and just click send number. So we can stop this. So that's what we have over here. Um, we'll now now what I'll show you is how we can fetch the reading of the um, IMU and see um, the accelerometer and the gyroscope readings. All right.